After this talk, I'm going to present you a probabilistic framework for mapping out phase diagrams of physical system in an automated fashion from data. So phase transitions are really ubiquitous. And in our everyday lives, we typically encounter them as changes between the three main phases of matter, solids, liquid, gas, as a function of external conditions such as temperature and pressure. And within a given phase, uh, physical properties are uh, largely constant. And so to characterize uh, the properties of a given physical system really boils down to mapping out its phase diagram. And that's why we care about it. Now, more generally speaking, phase transitions occur when a system undergoes a qualitative change of its state as a function of a control or tuning parameter. And so that's, that's what makes this, this phenomenon really um, universal. And phase transitions occur in many different flavors in many different domains. So notable examples are, for example, um, transitions within the conductive properties of cuprates, which are materials which show and uh, superconductivity at very high, high temperatures, or phase transitions in the entanglement properties of quantum circuits, in the collective motion of active matter, such as a flock of birds, or the behavior of uh, artificial neural networks. Now, mapping out a phase diagram of a physical system is typically a hard task, and that's because the system state lives in a very high dimensional space and is probabilistic. So for a given value of our tuning parameter or control parameter, we can find the system in various different states. And the physicist's approach to this problem would be to find a set of, a small set of uh, suitable low dimensional quantities which capture the essence of each of the phases that are present. And these low dimensional quantities are what, what are called order parameters. So even though, for example, water is a very complex system, we can capture the phase transition, for example, from liquid to gas by simply looking at uh, the density as a function of temperature. And we see that it shows a discontinuity at the critical temperature. So in this case, the density serves as our order parameter. And by computing, for example, derivative, we can uh, immediately read off this critical temperature. Now, we would like to replace the physicist in this process. And the approach which uh, results from that would be generic, so it would not depend on the details of the system, and that would really allow us to map out phase diagrams automatically from readily accessible data, be it from numerical simulations or experiments. And because it does not depend on prior theoretical knowledge, it could, in principle, enable the discovery of new phases of matter and could be used to identify unexplored phase transitions. Now, neural networks have had tremendous success in tasks such as image classification or other related tasks, and that's why those are sort of the main drivers of this development. So many of the machine learning methods for detecting phase transitions, which we know of today, are based on solving classification or regression tasks using neural networks, and all of these methods follow a similar workflow, which is depicted here. So on the left uh, is our physical system, and let's for the moment just assume that it's characterized by single tuning parameter p, and we perform measurements of our system at various discrete values of this tuning parameter. That is, we draw samples x from the probability distributions, capital P, underlying the physical system. And based on this data set, we're going to train a neural network to minimize a given loss function. And once we have done this training, we're going to analyze its predictions y hat, and we're going to compute a scalar indicator of phase transitions i at each sampled value of this tuning parameter. And ideally, this indicator will then peak at the critical value and thus highlight the phase transition. Now, different methods differ in the choice of loss functions, so the underlying classification or regression task we trained neural network to solve, as well as how to compute the indicator based on these predictions. These methods can also be extended to uh, physical systems featuring multiple tuning parameters, so in this case, two. In that case, uh, the output of the neural network is typically multidimensional, and we are really looking for local maxima in the indicator map, which is here shown in black, that should highlight phase boundaries. Now, I've told you that many of the popular machine learning methods for detecting phase transitions are based on solving classification task or regression task explicitly by training neural networks. Now, this approach is really suitable if we don't have access to the probability distributions underlying our measurements. 
But it turns out that oftentimes we do have such access and we can do better if we exploit this knowledge. So let's see how this can be done. So what we do is we replace the neural network by analytical expressions for the optimal predictions, y hat opt, which minimize the loss function. And these predictions are optimal in the sense that there's no other predictive model that would perform better on the task specified by the loss function. So how do these optimal predictions look like? So the optimal prediction for a given sample x uh, looks as follows, where k denotes the, or indexes the set of sampled values in our tuning parameter space, and y sub k are tuning parameter dependent labels that differ from method to method. So to construct uh, the optimal prediction for a given sample x, we weight each of these tuning parameter dependent labels by the corresponding conditional probability. And this conditional probability can be constructed by the probability distributions underlying the measurements across our parameter space, P sub K of X. Now, once we have obtained these optimal predictions, we can compute an optimal indicator of phase transitions by processing these optimal predictions in the same fashion as we did for neural network-based ones. And notice that the computation of these optimal predictions really boils down to knowing the probability distributions under the measure, underlying the measurements, these P sub K of X terms. Now in physics, uh, sometimes we even have analytical expressions for these quantities or exact numerical values, and then we can use them. But more generally, we can work with any probabilistic description of our system in terms of generative models with explicit tractable densities. So what are those? Those are, for example, autoregressive networks, normalizing flows, or tensor networks. And we could also train or tune these uh, generative models based on drawn samples. So let's see a, sort of a natural case where we have access to such a probabilistic description. We can speed up this process, and that's the task of mapping out quantum ground state phase diagrams. So we want to map out the phase diagram of the ground state of a 1D chain of qubits, which is described by the following Hamiltonian. So it contains a three-body interaction coupling to an external field and the nearest neighbor coupling. And so the two tuning parameters we consider is the strength of this external field H and the strength of this nearest neighbor coupling J. And we can obtain a probabilistic representation of the ground state of the system uh, in the form of matrix product states via itensor.jl, uh, based on which we perform tomographic, a tomographically complete set of measurements. And then because we have access to the probability distributions underlying these measurements, we can very easily compute uh, the optimal indicator over the sampled parameter space of um, any machine learning methods we desire. And in this case, uh, this optimal indicator correctly reveals the phase diagram. So the optimal indicator peaks at these two phase boundaries and thus separates the three distinct phases that are known to be present in this model. So in conclusion, I've presented you a framework for mapping out phase diagrams in an automated fashion from data. And this framework is generic, so it doesn't rely on any specifics of the underlying system. And so that's why it's very well suited to be used as a tool to discover new phases of matter. And now computationally or numerically, it all boils down to the computation of these indicator functions. And we can approach this computation in two very distinct ways, in a model-free way and a model-based way. And as an outlook, uh, we are currently uh, applying these methods to uh, systems outside of the realm of physics. And if you have any particular example, please let us know. And we're also uh, looking to make these tools uh, more easily accessible to the Jula community. Thanks.